Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. I think I'm finally over the uh, crud, whatever I had. Also, I want to apologize to everybody. I generally try to answer everybody's email and questions, but I've been falling behind. I'll try to catch up, you know, so please forgive me. It's been a rough couple of weeks. Um, yeah, it's been a rough couple of weeks. I'm not sure if this is going to be one or two parts, but this is going to be on Egypt. And in the previous studies, uh, the Ishmael study and what have you, Egypt was the land of Ham, one of the three sons of Noah. Ham was the father of the Canaanites, Canaan, Canaanites, and all the other bad stuff. Uh, they were Sodom, Gomorrah, you know, all the bad things were through Ham. I don't think the Bible says anything good about any of the children of Ham. Nothing that I can find. Um, I did the study on Ishmael. Ishmael was the son of an Egyptian woman with Abraham. Abraham was old, his wife was old, and he thought, well, God promised me a son. I can't have it with this old woman that I'm with, so I'm going to grab me. Well, Sarah said, well, grab my Egyptian handmaid. And that's the children of the flesh. But God wants the children of the spirit, the children of the promise. We're going to go more into that in depth. So keep that in mind. All I know is Egypt and Babylon are all bad. I cannot find one good thing about Egypt in Scripture. So I think what I'm going to do is... Um, and oh, by the way, Ishmael married an Egyptian girl. So here it is. You had... Uh, a son of Abraham who was half Egyptian marry an Egyptian girl so I guess that would have made their children three quarters of Egypt so keep that in mind and Ishmael's daughters married into Esau's line and Esau married into Ishmael's line maybe that's what the Saudi royal family are that's would be my guess god said that ishmael would be the wild man of the desert and his hand would be upon every man sounds like the arabs to me you know there's a reason why they're flooding the formerly christian lands with uh, muslims arabs whatever and from what i understand the word arab means mixed and the Bible doesn't particularly care for uh, mixes but uh, nowadays they'll scream racism that's racist God's not a racist uh, really God's God doesn't pick and choose really and exclude who he will and um, of course you know other people uh, will read other people's mail and then apply it to everybody. And that's basically what the Bible, you know, the Bible's the uh, children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And are you going to take their mail and uh, apply it to everybody else? I mean, that's not how it works in my book. But uh, all right, so let's read. Uh, this probably will be a two-part study. But I want to make it clear 
This is a continuation about Judah's scepter and Joseph's birthright book, where the guy, uh, J.H. Allen, A-L-L-E-N, says that uh, Joseph's kids were Egyptians, or half e Egyptians. Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, God was very plain and clear about the bloodlines. You know, there's a reason why it says, you know, so-and-so begat, so-and-so who begat, so-and-so who begat, who begat, who begat, begat. You know, there's a reason for those, those bloodlines, their lineages. There's a reason for that. People think, well, you know, God's just putting that in there to fill up some words in the Bible, you know. It doesn't matter anymore. We're all of one blood. Actually, we're not of one blood. There's different blood types from what I understand. And if you give, uh, you got R, R, the RH negative factor, the RH positive factor. Um, I mean, it, and I was reading some things that if you give uh, blacks blood from white people, it can cause major health problems. Sometimes they die. But the uh, Red Cross and what have you, they don't like to talk about that stuff because, I don't know, uh, there's probably a number of reasons, but uh, yeah. But I don't know. I don't have much medical training in blood typing and what have you. But there's a reason why they uh, type people's blood. And blacks have sickle cell anemia problems. And the Jews, especially the Eastern European, Yiddish-speaking Ashkenazi Jews, they have all kinds of uh, hereditary diseases and blood disorders, um, tie socks, and a number of other things, too. So are we all of one blood? I don't know. I don't think so, but, uh, you know, I'm not the final authority. So, all right, well, I've been jibber-jabbering for a while. Let's get going here on Egypt. All right, I guess we're going to do this a little different. I'm going to read the New Testament. And then we're going to go back and take a look at the Old Testament about Egypt. Now, I did a playlist on the plagues of Egypt compared and contrasted with the plagues of Revelation. Very interesting. Um, yeah, that was a very interesting study. I, I got to admit, I didn't understand it as well as I would like to have. But there's some definite similarities. And all the plagues of Egypt were a challenge to the gods, plural, gods, plural, of Egypt. Um, you had, uh, what was it, like three days of darkness? And that was the challenge to the uh, their sun god. I think that was set, if I remember correctly. Um, you know, <laughs> Moses was challenging the gods of Egypt. Set was the sun god. And then they had the frog god. And then uh, you had the plague of the flies. Um, perhaps you remember the name, term uh, Beelzebub. Um, that's basically translated as Lord of the Flies. And uh, what else? And then you had um, the God of the Nile River. The Nile turned to blood. They couldn't drink the water. I, you know... <laughs> Uh, it was, it, it's an, it's interesting, to me it's interesting. I don't know, a lot of people don't find the Bible interesting. Um, they don't think it's worth spending their time, you know, so that's on them. So, all right, um, Joseph, we're going to read about Joseph. In Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13, 
So here it is. Christ was born uh, um, from Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit. Christ is called the second Adam. Why is that? I did a Bible study on that. The first Adam had no mother and no father. Think about it. He was formed of the dust of the earth and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. I mean, Adam, uh, Adam was called uh, a son of God. Yeah, because God was his father, but not in the normal human sense. Well, Christ is called the second Adam because he had the same mother and father as the first Adam. Mary carried Jesus in her womb, but her fallen nature was her, her genetics was not needed. So I did an entire Bible study on that. Um, you know, but the Catholics want, well, Mary's the mother of God. Well, I don't think so. Mary carried God in the flesh, but um, she, God, Jesus was not a half human, half God. That's what Hercules was. And Thor, when Odin did a Earth Girl, and she had a son, and he named him Thor. And I forget who, I think Hercules was fathered by Zeus. I don't know. You know, Greek and Norse, Nordic mythology, uh, you know. Yeah, Satan always tries to muddy the waters. Don't stick with those Greek and Roman and garbage. You know, the King James, that's all you need. That's all you need. Matthew 2.13, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, Mary, Christ, Christ and Mary, and flee into Egypt. Run to Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. You know, it's funny. When uh, Pilate was uh, having the trial of Christ, and he heard Christ was of Galilee, he says, oh, wait a minute. Galilee is uh, Herod's jurisdiction here. I'm going to send, send him to Herod. And... You know, Herod's like, oh, cool, here's Christ. Hey, I want to see a magic show. You know, I want to see some of these miracles I've been hearing all him doing all about, you know. But you know what Christ said to Herod? Nothing. Not a word. Herod was, I'll guarantee you, Herod was of the bad seed line. Josephus, a Jewish historian, says that Herod was of the Edomites, Esau, Edom, and I have no reason to doubt it, you know. Why didn't Christ say, uh, you know, King Herod, you better repent and uh, bring forth meat, uh, fruits, meat for repentance? No, he didn't say nothing to him. Not a word. Why? You know, people, people with these screwed up theology they can't they can't answer these kind of questions christ didn't want herod to be saved herod was of the bad seed line the whole family was polluted all of them they had to be all right so uh the angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream and said take the christ child his mother and you and get Get out of there. Go to Egypt. Because Herod's going to try to kill you. Uh, well, try to kill the child. Verse 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called 
my son. Now remember, Christ is called the only begotten Son of God. But Israel is also called uh, a son also. So this is figuratively Israel as a whole and Christ specifically. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Now in um, Matthew 2.19, you know, Herod was dead. It said, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a, uh, in a, uh, in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and uh, said, Okay, those that wanted to kill, now I'm paraphrasing, those that wanted to kill Christ, are, they're all dead, so you can return uh, back to the land of Israel, which he did. And, um, matter of fact, let's take a look. Saying, uh, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But he, when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. You know, the family. It was a bad, 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 bad bloodline. Notwithstanding being born of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Jesus of Nazareth, a Nazarene. Well, who was, uh, who was another famous Naz Nazarite? Yeah, I don't know. I've had people say Nazarites and Nazarenes are different, but I don't see it. Um, Samson. Wasn't Samson a, uh, he took the vow of a Nazar, you know, the Nazarite vow? I think so, yeah. So, all right, let's see. Egypt. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 7. Uh, Stephen is uh, being accused of some things, and he's going to give the children, uh, the men of Israel, a kind of a history lesson here. So let's read that. Acts chapter 7. All right, Stephen had been accused of a bunch of bad things. So Acts 7, verse 1. Then said the high priest, are these things so? Yeah, I guess we ought to go back to 6, shouldn't we? Yeah, let's go to 6. It, it, yeah, I don't know. All right, Acts 6, verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So, um, honestly, I think in the when the time of great evil falls upon us, um, the Bible seems to indicate that believers are going to be able to do miracles in the last, last, last days. And there's great evil upon us now. I mean, I cannot believe... Just when I think I've seen all the evil that can come into this world, there comes more. It's just unbelievable. I mean, I cannot believe the changes I've seen as a kid growing up in Miami, back when there was hardly any child kidnappings and hardly any murders and uh, violent crime, just... It's unbelievable. I think it was in Philadelphia. Um, a woman was raped by an animal on a train. And what did people do? They recorded it on their cell phones and put it on YouTube. You know, personally, I think somebody should have pulled a knife out of their pocket and walked up to the guy when he was trying to get ready to do it and 
put a nice slice across his back, but uh, of course you'd probably be charged with a hate crime if you were of a different racial. Uh, yeah, you get my eye. You, you get the thing. Yep, the you know who's are in charge of all the legal stuff. They don't call it the judicial system for nothing. Um, it's misspelled. Uh, J U D I C I A L. It ought to be spelled with a, uh, a E and W as a second and third letter. But yeah, I digress. So Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. You know, every time it's uh, somebody disputing with the Christians, it's always those of the uh, synagogue, right? And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. You know, when, when the Christians were healing people that were uh, disabled, it's hard to argue that. And the suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Oh, yeah. They, also, they always falsely accuse you, just like they falsely accused Christ. And set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. Oh, yeah. Well, guess what? 70 AD, God showed them what he thought of their little holy place, their temple. The Romans came and burned it and threw every stone down. Matthew 24. And the Wailing Wall is not part of the temple. Otherwise, Jesus is a liar. Look up Matthew 24. Jesus said, not one stone would be left upon another. And it wasn't. So the Wailing Wall was the Roman fort, the remains of a Roman fort. So, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as if it had been the face of an angel. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he, Stephen, said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, listen up. That's the Bob translation. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charon. Now, if you don't know what Mesopotamia is, um, that was the general area of Babylon. So God called Abraham out of the general area of Babylon. That was Mesopotamia. Verse 3. And said unto him, God said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. And he came out of the land of the Chaldeans, and dwelt in Charon. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land, wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed, his children, and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And God spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring him into bondage and entreat them evil for hundred years. Where were the children of Israel into uh, in bondage and were treated evil for 400 years? Uh, 
Well, if you've ever read the book of Exodus, you would know that the children of Israel went to Egypt and they were there for at least 400 years. Verse 7, And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge. Oh yeah, God's going to judge them. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, say, say God. And after that they shall come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave them the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob began the twelve patriarchs. Remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Israel and Jacob mean the same basic, well, it, it refers to the same person. Uh, Jacob means supplanter, kind of like a trick, trickery. Whereas Israel means uh, prince with God or rules with God. And the patriarchs, moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now remember, these were the Hiskos. These were not native Egyptians. These were the Semitic cousins of Israel who had conquered Egypt. You know, uh, history, you know, our history has been hidden from us. It, it's, it's terrible. I mean, you can't even hardly find any information on this kind of stuff anymore. They don't teach this in schools. All they teach now is white people are evil and they oppress everybody. Yeah, that's what they teach. So, now I want you to think of something. The 11 brothers sold Joseph into slavery to the Ishmaelites that were on their way to Egypt and the, um, you know, he was sold into slavery and then uh, he served time in prison because uh, the, uh, the captain of the guard that bought him from the Ishmaelites or purchased him or whatever, uh, his wife wanted him and uh, she laid false accusations against him and he served time in prison. I mean, you know, think about it. Can you imagine some of the thoughts going through his mind? Those dirty 11 brothers of mine you know, and then being mad at uh, uh, the, his master's wife, you know. But Joseph had, I did an entire Bible study on it. Joseph is, you want to read a study on forgiveness, read the story of Joseph. I mean, that that study moves moved me so much. I mean... Joseph had Joseph had a, a quarrel against a bunch of people, but uh, he was such a forgiving soul. That's why the Lord was with him. You know what was uh, what was the, the the two great commandments that the Lord Jesus gave us? You know, I know I've beat this horse to death, but let's give it another whipping. Someone asked Jesus, what was the most important commandment? Uh, don't tell the Hebrew roots people because they can't figure it out. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six. 36, he said, Master, which is, uh, which is basically rabbi. Rabbi and master means the same thing in the New Testament. Master, what is, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. But don't tell the Hebrew roots people. They, they don't believe Jesus. Uh, we got to be circumcised and keep the Sabbath. And we got to keep all the feast days. And there's nothing wrong with keeping feast days. Honoring the Lord by keeping feast days. But your salvation doesn't come by keeping feast days. It doesn't come by keeping the Sabbath. It doesn't come by circumcision. Paul says circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but faith in Christ. Well, we don't like Paul either. Paul's a false apostle, they'll tell you. You know? And of course, they'll say Paul changed the law, but no, it was Jesus that changed the law. Matter of fact, Jesus said, uh, you know, just to look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. And that's basically the Bob paraphrase. So, And I got to admit, I went to my favorite restaurant tonight, one of my favorite restaurants tonight, and I wanted to have a good meal after being sick for a couple weeks there. And uh, went there, and they had a really cute uh, girl taking care of the register, and I caught myself looking at a certain, well, let's just say she was attractive, caught myself and it's like uh yeah there's a flesh for you you know but she's probably yeah she's young enough to be my granddaughter uh, you know just to look at them you've committed adultery already with them in your heart you're in trouble christ changed the law not paul you know they, of course they uh these people are evil. One day they'll uh, find out. They don't believe. They don't believe Paul. They don't believe the person that sent Paul. And they don't believe the person. Uh, they don't believe God the Father that sent the person that sent Paul. So. Yeah. So back to Acts chapter 7. And yeah, that, uh, take a look. Uh, if you want to learn about Joseph and forgiveness, I got a playlist on that. Uh, Joseph is, boy, what a, what, a, what a character he was. I mean, you know, sometimes God uses afflictions to prepare us. You know, let me tell you something. Lord had to almost kill me. I mean, I was sick unto death. I've never done a um, my testimony. I've had some people ask me, but my story is not important. It really isn't. The story of Christ is what is important. These people in the, the book, they're important. Not my story. But the Lord had to almost kill me a couple times to, to get my attention and to bring me back. I mean, I'm I'm not where I should be. But, uh, you know, sometimes the Lord uses bad things to get our attention and to prepare us. I mean, can you imagine? Joseph was in prison because of the uh, captain of the guard's wife. And then when he became the, I think it was the second or third ruler in Egypt... Did he seek revenge? Can you imagine that? The captain of the guard probably had to report to Joseph. And he's the one that had Joseph put into a prison. I mean, first time he met him coming out of prison, you know, when he was the second or third ruler in all of Egypt. Can you imagine how fearful he must have been? You know, thinking, oh boy, is this guy going to have me put to death? But Joseph, he, I don't think he had a mean bone in his body, figure of, speak, figure of speaking. But uh, yeah, the study of Joseph, what an incredible story. I mean, you know, and these stories are for our examples. We should be like that. You know, I bet you Joseph was praying for uh, 
uh, the wife that had falsely accused him of trying to rape her. And I bet you he was praying for all these people to, I don't know. All right. Acts 7, 9. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, and God was with him. Now, remember, Joseph had uh, the coat of many colors. I bet you it was plaid. Every time I read that coat of many colors, I think plaid, you know, like uh, Scotland, you know, very colorful coat. And all, everybody else, they were, they were jealous of Joseph. But God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him go governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth, you know, famine, over all the land of Egypt and Canaan and great affliction. And our fathers found no sustenance. That's right. There was, there was famine in the land. God was setting the stage. But when Jacob heard there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Can you imagine the meeting that happened? You know, when Joseph's brothers, I mean, you're, you're, you know, here it is, you sold this young kid, probably a young teen, you know, he's probably 16, 17, whatever, into slavery. And then you meet him when he's like, what, 40, 45 years old? He, you know, he probably, they probably didn't even recognize him, of course. And then you find out he's, the ruler in Egypt, he could have any one of these brothers put to death. But did he do that? No. He took care of the family. And he was moved that some of the brothers were sorrowful about how they had treated him when he was young. You know? And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, threescore and fifteen souls. That's seventy-five people, threescore, twenty, forty, sixty, plus fifteen, seventy-five. Seventy-five souls. Well, guess what? Uh, Four hundred years later, about over half a million, if I remember correctly, over a half a million Israelites left Egypt. Uh, 15. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over into Sikkim, Shikkim, and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the father of Shechem. And when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. That's right. The Hiskos, who were Semitic cousins of the Israelites, they were called Egyptians because they lived in Egypt and they were in charge. And the priest of one of the priests of Egypt gave his daughter to Joseph. But then the Hiskos, um, they were overthrown by the Egyptians. And that's what this is talking about. Till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred. And evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children. To the end, they might not live. Yeah. They were commanded to take the young boys, the newborn boys, and throw them into the Nile River. You ever heard of a Nile crocodile? That'd be a nice little snack for a crocodile. And uh, people complain about, well, God killed all the firstborn of Egypt. That's so cruel and evil. No, that's justice, people. 
how many how many how many Hebrew boys died because of these Egyptians? How many? God says, "Okay, you want my children to die? Let me show you how it's done. The first Passover, all the firstborn's going to die." And let me tell you something. I did a study on this too, but if anybody's interested, I'll look it up. But uh, Jesus said that in the resurrection, that we would neither marry nor be given a marriage. And yet in the Old Testament, it says that in the kingdom, there would be children playing at the uh, hole of a, an asp, which is a venomous snake, and it wouldn't be hurt. So if there's no marriage in heaven, where do these children come from? Oh, that's right. What about all these children that were died in childbirth or that were aborted in modern day times or that were drowned in the Nile River and eaten by crocodiles? All of them have to grow up and be tested and tried to see if they'll follow the Lord or if they'll follow the devil. I, I did a study on this, if anybody's interested. You know, there's going to be children in the kingdom. But it's not going to be from people having babies. I, I think it's going to be, they're going to be kind of uh, resurrected, but not, uh, not spiritually resurrected. They're not going to be given, I don't think, I think they're going to be given their flesh bodies back. Not, they're not going to be resurrected bodies like the saints who are given the same type of body that Christ had. Christ said, I am flesh and bone to Thomas. Handle me. Put the print, you know, put your hands in the prints of my hands and thrust it into, you know, your fist into my side. He was flesh and bone. Or, yeah. Not the same as when he was born of Mary. It's a different, different. So that's my guess. So the same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil and treated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair fair a racial description oh yeah and nourished up in his father's house three months and when he was cast out pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son and moses was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians pharaoh's daughter you know the king's daughter let me tell you something people if you if you are raised up in the king's household, you're going to get the best education that uh, even even better than the best education that money can buy. Sort of like old time Harvard, old time Yale, old time Oxford, old time Cambridge, University of Berlin. I mean, you know, the best of the best. You're going to be taught everything you need to know. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. You know that number 40? It pops into the Bible a lot. Oh yeah. A lot. Um, the flood of Noah. How many days? 40. How many days did Jesus fast? 40. How old was Moses? 40. Now, that number pops up a lot. I, I, it's, there's certain numbers that just pop up in the Bible. And they have spiritual significance, but I don't understand as well as I'd like to. Um, 
But uh, yeah, if you're interested, you can read uh, Ivan Panin, P-A-N-I-N, his book on numbers, or Bullinger did a numbers in scripture, B-U-L-L-I-N-G-E-R. Um, I mean, those, those are whole studies in and of themselves, really. I read Bollinger's book uh, probably over 30 years ago. I got a basic elementary understanding, you know, probably like a third grade education, maybe fourth or fifth, I don't know. So, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel, and seeing one of them suffering wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God, by his hand, would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove. Now remember, this guy, Moses, is being raised of the daughter of Pharaoh. I mean, he's kind of, you know, he's of the, in the royal family, in the royal palace. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, you know, they're arguing, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Ooh. Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begat two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. So when all this was going on, Moses was forty, and he was forty years in, in um in the land of Midian, Midian. So he was 80 years old when he went back to Pharaoh to say, let my people go. You know, the book of Exodus is, people don't realize, this is our history. Actually, the Bible is, when it pertains to Christ, it is his story history but this is our book it is our book somebody uh pointed out and said that uh when you read the story of jacob when he got the blessing from isaac uh at the request of his mother he pretended to be esau he dressed up and pretended to be esau and isaac was blind pretty much so he he says, wait a minute, the, this hairy body is that of Esau, but the voice is Jacob's. And he gave him the blessing. So Jacob pretended to be Esau. And somebody pointed out that today Esau is pretending to be Jacob Israel. Yeah. If you look at the Jewish Encyclopedia, if you could find it, the 1925 edition, it says that Edom, Esau Edom, is in modern Jewry today, just like Herod. Yeah. Very interesting article. Tell you what, I spent a lot of time in the library uh, reading literature from the Jews a lot, a lot. I know what they believe. Matter of fact, I had a rabbi that I was talking to when I was trying to learn. You know, I was kind of young back then uh, in the faith. You know, I didn't really totally understand what was what. But he even complimented me and said, you know more about this stuff than a lot of their own people. You know, the, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I read your I read your writings. I know how you feel about us and their little things. So 
There appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, verse 32, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. You know, when I first came back to the Lord, I prayed to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Because you know what? There is all these sacred name people and, you know, and they're little, oh, Yahuwah and Yahshua and Yahahuah and whatever. I don't know who that is. But when you say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that is very specific and precise. And the creator of heaven and earth knows exactly who you are referring to. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then, then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groanings, and am come down to deliver them, and now come, ah, and now come, I will send thee into Egypt. And Moses, whom they refused, Israel was, you know, they refused Israel. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he was showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, you know, the plagues of Egypt, and in the Red Sea. Remember the Red Sea? Pharaoh's uh, Israel was surrounded by it, the Pharaoh's army. And then they had the Red Sea behind them and Pharaoh's army in front of them. God parted the Red Sea. Israel crossed by dry land. And when Pharaoh's army tried to do the same, well, they were drowned. They were baptized in the Red Sea. Yeah. And guess what? The Bible heretics will tell you, no, 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 it's, they didn't cross the Red Sea. They said it's the Sea of Reeds, R-E-E-D-S. Uh, a reed is just a, an aquatic plant that grows in shallow water. I mean, after all, how could Israel cross the Red Sea? It wasn't supernatural. They were, you know, they were uh, ankle deep in water and just crossed, you know. But the, uh, the real miracle, well, that's what the so-called fake Bible scholars will tell you. But the real miracle would be how did Pharaoh's army drown in ankle deep water? You know, yeah. They call that higher criticism of the Bible. I call it lower criticism because it comes from the pit of hell. You know, I tell you what, these people that spend all their time uh, denigrating the Bible stories, God has a special place for these kind of people. Oh yeah, he's got a special place for them. He brought them out after that. He showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. Do you realize Moses was 40 years old, fled to Midian for 40 years, and then he wandered in the wilderness 40 years. Moses was about 120 years old. Hmm. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. The church in the wilderness. Did you know the church was with Moses in the wilderness when the Israel came out of Egypt? Yeah. Boy, you never hear that taught in church. This is he. 
that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. See, the church was in the wilderness with Moses when they went through the Red Sea. That's not right, Chaplain Bob. The church is the church, and the Jews are the Jews, and they're not the same. And they want you to think that God has two brides. God is not a polygamist. God has one bride, Israel, the church, those that are in Christ, period. There's not a Jew bride and a, and a Christian bride. There's not two brides. There's one bride, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, period. Ugh. People wonder why I don't ha uh, attend any church. Because I kept being asked to leave. Well, not asked. I'm told to leave. Because they teach lies. And their hearts turned back again into Egypt. Oh, yeah. These people wanted to go back to Egypt. The gods of Egypt. Saying unto Aaron, make us gods, plural. Make us gods to go before us. For as uh, for this Moses, which brought us out of e the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. See, remember when Moses was up in the mountain, getting the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments. He was there for a while, and the people are like, uh, what happened to Moses? Where is he? Make us gods. Verse 41. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejected in the works and rejoiced, rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. The angels, right? The fallen angels. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Verse 43. Woo. Now this is Stephen telling these people he's full of the Holy Spirit. He said, Yea, ye, Israel, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch. Who is Moloch? Moloch was the satanic god of child sacrifice by fire. Can you imagine burning your children alive? Child sacrifice? Does that sound like Satanism? Oh, yeah. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphem. Has anybody ever taken a look at the star of the, uh, the Israeli state? Is there a star on that flag? Hmm. Remphem. What is Remphem? Remphem has reference to the giants. You know, those things that supposedly never existed according to the modern church world? Oh, those giants, they were just tall guys. You know, they could have played for the NBA, you know, and everybody else was real short back then. So, you know, you see a guy that's six foot eight and, and, and Moses was probably five foot two. You know, they, they look like giants. Uh, Israel said that they were like, they, they were compared to the giants. They were like grasshoppers in their sights. You know, they were not a foot and a half taller than them. No. No. Which is why I hate the modern church world. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your God, 
the star of your god Remphem, figures which ye may do worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Egypt and Babylon, people. Mm, the star of your God. Figures which ye made to worship them. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Verse 44. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. And if you don't know what they're talking about, you could read the book of Leviticus. Leviticus, God was very, very specific on how the tabernacle and the furniture uh, was going to be made. Verse 45, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus unto the possession of the Gentiles whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Israel went into the land and was supposed to drive out the Canaanites and kill them all. God said, go into the land and kill everything that breatheth. Don't, uh, don't evangelize them. Don't make marriages with them. Don't take their sons for your daughters and don't take their daughters for your sons. But uh, you never hear that stuff taught in the modern church world because we don't want people asking questions. You know, we can't have that. Unto the days of David, who found favor before God, desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him in house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Yeah, God made the heavens. He made the earth. All the stars. You know, everything. Hath not my hand made all these things? Stephen, in verse 51, says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Yeah, your flesh might be circumcised, but your heart and your ears are uncircumcised. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Oof. who have received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. Boy, uh, Stephen's really laying it on thick here. You persecuted the prophets. You've killed them. You're betrayers, murderers. You didn't keep the law. Verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly unto heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And no, he didn't go to the CBD dispensary and get some really good weed. No, no, they, they, they took rocks and throat, stoned him to death. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Who was Saul? Saul of Tarsus, who changed his name to Paul, who became known as the apostle. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, uh, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So Stephen says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. No, he wasn't taking a cat nap. He died. 
Yeah. Egypt people, Egypt, uh, this might even be a three-part series, maybe four, I don't know. See, there are, Egypt is uh, not, not, that's not the place to be. Not the place to be, no. See, God wants not only to take his people physically out of Egypt, he wants to take them spiritually out of Egypt and Babylon. I don't know what's worse, Babylon or Egypt. I don't know. Uh, they sound like twin sisters to me, if you ask. Well, if you ask me, so. All right, well, that is Acts chapter 7. I guess we're done with that. And um, I hope you learned something. You know, the Bible doesn't talk very nicely about Egypt. I mean, you can... You can study, uh, look up gods of Egypt. And when you look at the plagues of Egypt, I mean, every one of them was a direct, uh, you know, it was, it, it was directed to the gods of Egypt. Whether it was the frog god or the god of the Nile or the god of the flies or uh, the god of, uh, of the sun god. You know, the, the time of darkness. And the gods of Egypt couldn't answer the God of heaven and earth. Couldn't do it. So, and I got a playlist on that too, if you're interested. So, people, I don't know how long I'm going to be on YouTube. No idea. So, like I say, if you're interested in downloading copies of my Bible studies, let me know. I got a link. Um, someone was kind enough to post them and put them on her server. And I hope she's doing okay. And um, you could download literally hundreds, hundreds of studies, hundreds of hours of studies. Because there's going to come a day when YouTube will delete me and I won't be able to it's getting to the point you can't put anything up. It's everywhere. You know, all these different sites pop up and they promise, oh, free speech and blah, blah, blah. And then the next thing you know, they're deleting videos, they're censoring, shadow banning. It's, it's getting bad. It's getting real bad. So... All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.